schools, then that child hopefully will become a citizen who is aware of such things, who is responsible enough not to harass women, who is responsible enough to know that a woman is being harassed and to take up for her and be enlightened about it. This is one way to go about it. The other is, you, I don't, um, at least when I was younger, when uh, Durdashan had just started, we often had short clips teaching people or preaching to people how one should behave. Now, those were very badly made short films. But maybe such films should be brought up and when you have those children's channels of Pogo and uh, Nickelodeon and all kinds of channels, children's channels, why not insert such a clip and have them understand this? Maybe make cartoon films about such things, animated, animation films about such things. The best way to start is with a child and that is for every, in every sphere of life. Once you teach the child when he or she grows up, you have a better citizen. Sensitization of uh, genders. Surely. You get married and I got married by, you know, there is two types of marriage. One is called auction, one is called contract. <laughs> we call it... Uh, so I got married by the auction option. So my parents and my family said that we are going to see a girl. Please come. So I said, I'm willing to go, but with one condition. So they said, we'll, we'll decide, etc. I said, I'm willing to go, but I... Whosoever I go, I will say yes and come back. <laughs> because how can I tell that person is bad? I'm going to see that person for the first time. So they did not take me. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is true. Then after they decided, they said, so you must see her. So I said, what will I see her? I am dark, black, she must see me and decide. <laughs> and I will walk, offer tea and everything. So in my house, my would-be wife came to my house to see me. <laughs> and, you know, that is, you know, you're saying, so, you know, we can do things differently. We can just do things differently. And don't take too much load. Do it with joy. <laughs> Life is all about taking. Why are you taking so much load in all these things? Be open-minded, do it freely. Everything will happen properly. I saw my wife only once. She has never even gone to my cave. That is my problem. <laughs> so it's all, it's all about that. It's all about being having clarity in your mindset and doing it with a lot of fun, humor, but doing the right thing. And then that one, then that one, then that one. And they figure out what is the best offering available. And contract is, you know, two people decide that we'll get married, our parents will scold us, we'll run away, then they'll have to accept us. Yes. For us to get our own house in order, identify the challenges that we have. You know, mindset, you said power. I will give you an example. It is not about power. It is about culture. It is about, not about, I'll give you a simple example. And this example, see, this example highlighted to me what is that you know, innate difference. Have you ever heard of Sri Rup Goswami, who was one of the doyens of uh, Vrindavan? He was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's direct pupil. Before his becoming a monk, he was one of the richest men in that area. And then he was known to be the most humble, but yet the greatest scholar of his times in, in spiritual philosophy. Now imagine, just listen to the conversation. Mirabai came to meet Rup Goswami. So when Mirabai came to meet Rup Goswami, 
So there was a parda, and Mirabai was sitting on the other side, and Rup Goswami was sitting on the other side. So Mirabai asked Rup Goswami, "You are the greatest scholar. You are the most humble scholar. It's not about power. Why are you putting this parda?" So Rup Goswami answered that, "I am Nari Darshan Karina. I don't." So do you know what Mirabai replied? She said that I thought that in Vrindavan there is only one Purush. Everybody is a Nari. Immediately Rup Goswami opened the heart. So it's not about power. It's deeper, deeper, very deep. Method of addressing women's issues in courts. Women are treated equally with men in courts. That is the very basis. Justice is blind. Now, there are provisions where courts are required to consider cases of uh, senior citizens at an early date. But for women, we don't have such a provision. And possibly it is because senior citizens who would probably meet their fate much earlier than most others who are waiting their turn in court, require that advantage over others. But for women, yes, there are destitute women, there are impoverished women, there are women waiting in the courts for divorces, for restitution of conjugal rights, several other cases. But there is no avenue to treat women differently in courts. And I think that is salutary. Why should a woman get an advantage over a male just because she is a woman? Why should her case be decided first? I can take your point that there.